looks like normally. Okay, just draw that. We're going to erase it, but I want to get the picture in your head. Draw the original cosine function. Then I want you to find your A, your amplitude, and I want you to find your period. Do those three things right now. I'm going to do it on the board, but you should have it on your paper. Okay, so before we start dealing with the amplitude and the period, I need you to get the, the idea, the picture of the function down. So the picture of the function, just the cosine, where does cosine start at? It goes where? It goes up. Okay, it goes up. So cosine would normally start right here at 1 and go like that. Do you have that same graph on your paper right now? You sure? Are you, are you positive? So we know we're not going to start at zero. We're going to be starting at either one or negative one, depending on what the sign is in front of our function. If we've got a negative sign in front of our function, you all should know from just your basic algebra and trigonometry classes that if you've got a negative, what that does is that reflects it. Does that make sense? So we're going to have a complete flip. So whereas this would be the cosine function, The negative cosine function would start there. Does that make sense to you? You go up and then back down. That's what that one would do. Okay, so we have an idea of what this is going to look like. It's going to be some, it's still going to be a nice curve like sine was, only this time it's not going to start at zero, zero. It's going to start at either a positive or a negative number. Now, have you found your amplitude yet? How much is your amplitude? Three. three. Okay. How'd you find three? Why isn't it negative three? Absolutely. Okay, good. So, absolute value of negative 3 is 3. And your period, did you find your period yet? We'd find period by doing 2 pi over whatever our b is. In our case, our b is 0.5. If we divide 2 by 0.5, we're going to get 4. Did you get 4 pi? Do it on a calculator if you have to. 2 divided by 0.5 is 4, 4 pi. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Finding the amplitude and the period. Okay, good. All right. What that means is that we're going to be cycling from our starting point to our ending point in a period of 4 pi. Not, not shorter now. It's going to be, what is that? Is that a compression or a stretch? stretch? That's a stretch. So what you're kind of realizing right now that a number that's bigger than 1 is going to be a compression. A number that's smaller than 1 for example, a, a decimal that's, that's less than one or a fraction less than one, that's going to be a, a stretching out. A number bigger than one in front is an amplitude gain. Uh, a number less than one in front is amplitude squishing down. Okay, it's shrinking that amplitude. Do you guys get the idea? All right. Here. Uh, you said less than one, but does that include negative one? Absolute value less than one. So between, um, between zero and okay. yeah, absolute value between zero and one. That would probably be the best way to say that, right? Yeah. Okay. Good catch. Now, how do you figure out where to start? Well, do we start at 3? Do we start at negative 3? What do you think? Negative 3. Negative 3. Why? Well, firstly, there's a negative in front of it. Secondly, why don't you plug in 0? What's, uh, what's 0 0.5 times 0? What's cosine of 0? <coughs> cosine of 0 is 1. 
look at you in a circle. You've got to know these things, at least the simple ones. If you don't know sine, cosine, tangent of at least 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, you, you need to go back. Do it today, do it tonight. Make sure you know at least those ones. I mean, those are huge, okay? You also should know the pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6. And then you can use reference angles for the rest, but you need to know those at least four. Are you with me on that? You got it. It's got to be tattooed on your brain. Hurt. But do it. Or on your forehead, that we read it backwards in the mirror, get it down. Cosine zero. One. Right. <laughs> so cosine of zero would be one. What's one times negative three? Negative we're starting negative three. So we are starting here. Guess what? If we're starting there and my period is 4 pi, I'm ending there. The interesting things have to happen in the middle of our intervals. That's how these work. So if we have a period of 4 pi, what's the middle of our 4 pi here? Something interesting is going to happen at 2 pi. Is it going to be crossing 0, a peak, or a valley? It's only one of those three things. Crossing zero. Remember, I've got to I've got to go up, peak, come down, and end here. I'll give you a hint. It's going to be it's going to be a peak, and the reason is the the same thing happens in the middle as it does at the ends. For instance, if you're crossing zero at the ends, you're crossing zero in the middle. Are you crossing zero at the ends? Then you're not crossing zero in the middle. That's not, what, that's not what's happening. If you're peaking at the end somehow, either a valley or peak, you're going to be peaking in the middle. So what's going to happen here? Is it a peak or a valley? It's not crossing zero. Is it a peak or a valley? It's a peak. Do you see why? You can't, you can't do this. OK, this is just one repeat of that, that same number. So here, you're going to have a peak of three. That's the only way that can work. It's the only way you can make one oscillation through that one cycle and come up with the same exact the same exact ending spot. You can't go up, cross here, down. That would that would do it. You, you can't do it at, at, on that uh, specific value. It's not going to be crossing zero there. What's going to happen at pi and three pi? You tell me that. That's where you're crossing. At pi and three pi, sure. Remember, our original cosine function did that nice swoop. Just that was that was it. We're just making it bigger and longer. So it's going to go up and come back down. Do you guys see where all these points are coming from? Are you okay with that? The interesting thing has happened at the middle of your intervals. So middle of the interval, that's two pi. If you peaked at the ends, you're peaking in the middle, and you're crossing at the the other two midpoints of those uh, subintervals. So we'll draw our function. Not real pretty for me, but I'm not an artist. So we're going up, come back down. That's the only way we can complete that graph. Do you guys have a basic understanding about how to do these cosine and sine functions now? How many people do feel OK about it? Might take some practice, right? We'll have to look at those things, go back to these notes, watch the videos if you want to. Have you guys all been to the website, by the way? Okay, it's a good place to, to find at least the homework. And then if you're struggling on some of the stuff, review those videos. Now, there's one more thing that we haven't talked about. We've done stretches and compressions, both with <coughs> amplitude and with the period. What haven't we done? There's only one other thing. We're going to learn how to shift it. Yeah, that's a whole bunch of shift, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Okay, so the amplitude and the period, that's not going to change. But what we are going to do is we're going to take a look at what happens if it's not just bx. What happens if this is like bx minus something? It'll shift. It's going to shift. We're going to find out how to do this, how to figure out what type of shift it is, and, uh, and then we'll do an example. Well, the first thing I need you to do, I'm going to work with, um, with this one to show you how it's done, but this right here, this really isn't going to give it to you. It's not going to tell you what the actual shift is. You've got to do a little bit more math with that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to force B to be factored out of those two things. So here's the idea. If we force B to be factored, you're going to write it as Y equals the A is not going to change, the sign, you can't change that. But when I say you're going to force B to be factored out of it, you're going to divide both things by B. If I divide both of those terms by B, 
Divide that by B, what do you get? Good, X. Okay, and somebody else. Divide this by B, what do you get? Negative C over B. Negative C over B, very good. Yeah, that we're forcing B to be a factor. Now, whether it actually divides or not, who cares? Uh, we're, we're making it divide both of those things. One's going to be a fraction, the other one's going to just be X by itself. I'm not sure if you're okay with that. Let's see where it's going. Okay. We're going to do the same thing with, with the cosine. So I'm not going to show the work again. It, you would just write it the same exact way. The C over B that's where we get our translation. That's going to be a shift along the x-axis. So a shift along the, the x-axis. It's kind of crucial that you get the shift correct. Got to get that shift right. All right. Make sure. It's fun to say shift, isn't it? Whole lot of shift in this class. What did you learn? Whole bunch of shift. <laughs> Letters class. Whole bunch of shift. If you have this, if you have minus c over b, please write this down correctly. If it's minus c over b, like uh, x minus this amount. Even though it says minus C over B, what that's going to do, that's a shift to the right. All right this is defined as subtracting the, the translation. So this right here, this minus C over B, is a shift to the right. So if it's minus C over B, you're going to shift right. If it's plus C over B, you're going to shift it left. I'll explain to you why right now, why this is the way it is in, in two different ways. Firstly, algebraically, a shift is defined as x minus the shift. So minus the translation, that's a shift to the right. If you have this, check it out x plus c over b would technically be x minus negative c over b. Do you see that? It'd be minus the shift. That's a left translation right there. That's where that negative's coming from. So I'm not crazy, all right? Plus, I know in your heads you want to go right. But in this case, that plus means left. Um, how you, uh, the, another way you can think of it is like a timeline, okay? If you are adding a number to something, you are, you're, um, you're speeding up when it happens according to a timeline. Timelines go this way, right? With the soonest things happening here and later things happening this way. If you add something to a number, it's not happening here anymore. It's happening sooner than that. Does that make sense to you? You're speeding up when that happens. You're adding something to it. It speeds up when you attain that value. Is that, it's an interesting way of thinking about it. If you subtract something like this, if you subtract something, it's slowing it down. It's not happening at, t at year zero. It's now happening later. It's slowing down when that would happen. That's a shift to the right. Does that make sense to you? It's a different way you can think of translations. So um, we're going to practice this. We'll do, we only get time for one example uh, with this stuff. But let's practice doing all this stuff with a, uh, we'll do a cosine. 